I hit the button. I it's do, okay, Sean. I literally hit the you button. say hello to everyone on YouTube. I, do. <laughs> I don't want to stress Sean out. He gets very. Uh, so why doesn't it just? I don't. I, I wish I had an answer for you, but I don't. <laughs> it's very. I just know it doesn't like you. It does not like me. I'm so sorry about that. I wish it did. That's exactly what I did. Just, I don't know. That's very weird. I wonder if because you waited too long. I, I waited too long. I don't know. Could be. Hey, everyone. Hi. Welcome. Hello. hello. So, um, as you guys are all joining and coming to the replay, we want to thank you. We do want to let everyone know that YouTube yeah, there you go. is just... streaming on a different camera than Instagram. Mm -hmm. um, and we're doing this because we know a lot of our viewers love to see us on YouTube. And Sean tries to monitor both, but... If we are not answering a question or something on YouTube, if you hop over to Instagram, sorry, I'm looking at that. I know. <laughs> if you hop over to Instagram.com forward slash Chocotor Ken's Creations, Sean is monitoring all the questions there. So um, check us out over there. Sorry, I did not go live yesterday. I've had and still have a headache two days in a row and it is getting worse and worse. Um, and it's all because... Uh, my trigger point injections are on Monday. Thank goodness. So hopefully I'll get out of some pain um, and stuff. I'm super excited for today's project. It was actually the one we were going to do yesterday. Um, if you are new to Instagram, make sure you uh, smash the follow button. Make sure to leave us lots of love and comments and share this with all your crafty friends. Um, Jasmine got a promotion at our work. She is now our content manager. So she's going to be doing a lot of downloading the YouTube video, the Instagram video, and trying to mash it into one for a replay. Um, so hopefully that will start happening soon. Uh, also know we have two dogs that live with us that are barky, and they sometimes bark. One's already going to bark because she heard a sound. <laughs> um, other than that, a uh, reminder to all of our amazing, beautiful customers, we adore you and love you. Our Club Couture customers, we did send you an email today. There was a restock today. The Highly anticipated wings is back in stock. So if you still need this transfer, grab it. Um, if you have any questions about Chalk Couture, the link in the Instagram bio will take you to everything you need to know. YouTube, all of your links are down below. Any third party product I use, so any product that is not Chalk Couture, leave us a comment, reach out to us on email, and we can get you those links. I also have this with me. I love it. I got this from Chaka Tour. Well, everyone that went to Maui, and it's a fan. With a little mist. Yeah, and it has a little mist. So when I get overheated. It's cool. So cool. Okay, so. All right, you b 2 b you guys are going to see this for a little bit because um, we don't want to tilt the camera too much. But what you're not seeing, I'll try to explain. Um, Sean has been killing it in the boyfriend slash husband slash special friend department. And for Christmas, he bought me a toaster oven, which I was like, that's weird. Why would you get me a toaster oven? I don't cook. And then he was like, no, it's to heat your wood, you Ben. So we're going to be using this today. Um, I burnt it. Because I put it in at 350 and Sean's like, that's too much. It's only two, it needs to be 200. That's um, so basically this is Wood You Bend and it is a product that you can heat, it bends, and then you are able to um, manipulate it, cut it, all that stuff. But we need to heat it because I do not know how much we need. Now you can put it in the toaster oven. You can heat it with a hair dryer, whatever. I'm going to put it back in the toaster oven just to get it a little bit more flexible. It won't take too long in there. And while that's doing that, I'll kind of explain to you what we're doing today. So we're using this. This is our um, burlap board. And we are going to do a project using the home, bless our home, e-size transfer and the blush floral pattern. So we're going to be doing two things. And then we're going to be, of course, using the would you bend and... There'll be a beautiful decorative piece. Um, so, I'm not gonna go into too much details on the Would You Bend. I will let you know that it is a pretty new product to the US market. If you check out our other channel, you can find out all the information there and what it is. Um, and as always, sorry, if you reach out to us, we'll be happy to answer any questions you might have on it. Um, but I do want to start with it because I'm going to be painting and I need to cut it 
to the right size. So I'm gonna go ahead and bring my board back out. So this here is our 18 by 24, and it is a uh, burlap board. And what's cool about this is now I can kind of start playing around with this, unwinding it to see exactly how long I need to make it. Now this part down here is a little, not as flexible as I want it, but that's okay. And what's cool is now that it's, I have a little bit of heat, I don't even really have to do anything besides cut it. So I just cut it with, you cut it with an X-Acto knife, whatever, but I am gonna cut it right about along the thread here. So I'm gonna cut it right here. Now you can only do this while it is um, warm. Warm, because if not, it's just going to go back to a solid wood form and it will break on you. So you wanna make sure that you heat this somehow before you use it. I always go a little bit off extra just in case we have an issue. So this now I'm not gonna use, I can turn this off and it's off. Oh, okay. And this will now dry back to this. So there you go. But we're gonna paint that because I want it to match my flowers we're using. So I'm gonna put this down for a sec. And this is just parchment paper. And I get this question all the time. Why are you, do you use parchment paper instead of butcher paper? I have both. Um, parchment paper does a really good job when I plan on dry brushing something. So this is already starting to get solid. So what we want to make sure we do is I'm just going to hold it for a quick sec here. So that way I don't have to heat it until after paint. Sorry that my dog's already barking. And see if it breaks, like this one did, don't worry, because it's gonna go back. We're gonna glue it down anyway, so. I am going to just heat this a little bit. Do you wanna go let her out? Mm -hmm. You can go with them. Show them, show them what we have to deal with. He's gonna go let our dogs out, you be too be. You be too be. So I'm gonna start with this one while he's letting her out. And I'm gonna do a base coat in basically a bright white paint. It's just called cotton. And I am not looking for- Base coat white. Base coat white. You yep. didn't hear you, yeah. Oh, sorry. So I am not looking for a pretty paint job because we are going to be doing a ton of different colors on this. So what I do is, <laughs> I put down a little bit of the paint. Uh, this is Dixie Bill. I know other people have their favorite paint. It's to each his own. Um, but Dixie Bell's paint, for any of the, you out there that have used it, it's a pretty thick paint. So I like to water it down a little bit when I use it. It'll go a little bit uh, further and it won't, thicker paints will like clog up this braid and I don't want that. So, if you are working with a thicker paint, the nice thing about wood you bend is you can even get it temporarily wet, stain it, all sorts of stuff, and it's gonna be just fine. And we're gonna be doing this in pink anyways, so like I said, we're not looking for, by any means, perfection. But you can see by just adding a little bit with the fine mist sprayer from Chalk Couture. The big thing I'm looking for on this is I really don't want to see the wood grain because that will throw my project off. How does it look on your side, Shawnee? Just a couple spots open. Sorry, YouTube, if I'm blocking you. Okay. Take it the chest. There we go, there it is. One. And then we're gonna grab our second one, including where I broke it. Now, I'll be honest, I probably break every wood you bend project. So if you are using it and it breaks, that's what's kind of nice about this product is you can easily manipulate it to uh, uh, put it right back into place when we actually dry it or replace it. So once again, I like to water down the paint on the thing I'm using. I know some people want to water it down first and then um, come back. For me, it's easier to water down once I put it on because it will naturally kind of get into this. And this is, I guess you would just call it a braid, right? It's like a pretzel yeah. braid. It's just a braid. 
upgrade. I didn't want something too thick, but I think this is perfect. All right, so. Yeah, uh, just a couple spots on the side. Oh, I see why you did that. Now I was, I was wondering why you put it like that, but now I get it. I'm on board, Shani. Mm. I can dig it. Okay, so I'm gonna go put this in my wash bin. Sean can get up close there. And then these are the two colors we're gonna highlight it with. So he can show you that real quick. So a couple pinks, kind of a medium pink and a really light, light blush pink with the white backgrounds. And this one is their, this is their whitest color of the, of the white, it's called cotton. The next one down from that is called um, fluff. It's just a little off white, not by much, but it, uh, So as I dry this, it will actually heat it and start laying flat too. Are we doing okay in UBTB? Yeah. I know the only, and I don't want to say it's a bad part, the only sad thing on YouTube is we can't see your comments. So if you have a question, we'll definitely get back to you after the fact, or um, hopefully somebody in the room hop so. over to Instagram, or if someone's on there answering questions, that would be awesome too. Um, We're trying all sorts of new things here, so. Hi, Miss Allie. Hi, Miss Allie. Maybe Miss Allie can double check YouTube. She's usually good about that. Okay, so we're gonna start with the darker pink. And the reason we picked out these pinks is we're gonna be utilizing this. So we're using these two. I'm gonna open this one. Um, and we're just gonna do some fun distressing with it. And this will be, besides the flowers right there, our only real pop of color. This is going to be a kind of a muted piece. And because of that, um, we want to get some good pinks here. Oh, where are all my... Oh, well, I'll use... Multi-tool is good for many, many things. Oops, spilled. That's, That's okay. okay. Are you having a panic attack a little? No. It's really spilled now. It's <laughs> everywhere, Jonathan. Oh goodness. It's okay. Deep breaths. See, look. Clean. Yeah. I know, I give him a panic attack when it comes to painting. It's okay though. We all deserve to have a little panic attack every once in a while. It's COVID time, Sean. We can have, we can have a little bit of panic. Okay, so. I'm going to start, I, this is our Chalk Couture um, self-healing cutting mat, and I'm going to put just a little bit of this paint down, and this is pretty light, so we might not see a ton, um, but you're going to see me do a lot of what I call dry brushing, so that's why I need this. Dry brushing, essentially you want the brush, you want the paint on your brush to almost start drying, but I want to keep as much paint on the brush, so I, I use parchment paper, but once again, teach his own. So we're not going to see a ton of highlighting here because it's a pretty pale pink, but it's going to be the start of the base of the next one. Yeah, I don't think we'll even see it on camera because it is so light. I barely even see it in person. In fact, I don't think we're going to use much more than that because it's just exactly where I need it, undertones. 
And then we're going to bring out our big old monstrous pink. The other pink is like... It's like a fuchsia. Fuchsia, it's muted. Um, and it's we're weird. actually going to use it a little bit, but it's going to be mixed in with the three. I need to make more of these. People keep asking for them. And... This one's peeny. Okay. So I'm going to put these over here so you guys can see. Shake, shake, shake. Okay. Now I'm going to put a little bit of the darker pink over here so I can pick it up. And then when we come to get this paint, I can kind of mix the colors. The first thing we're going to do is move this one out of the way and just work on one at a time. And this one's pretty dry. Yeah. Okay. So I'm going to grab some of this pink, bring it down here, and I'm going to add until I get to a nice color. This match is pretty close, but I still want a darker, lighter undertone. So I'm going to keep adding this and a little bit of the darker pink to get some nice flecks of different colors in there. So I almost want that stripe look. And I'm going to go with the braids here. And I know it looks like a lot, but we will tone it down with different on um, each layer. So I'll turn it around. Now you could keep this natural, you can stain it, you can, I mean, you can pretty much do anything with it. Um, it's just going to be uh, getting used to the heat settings and stuff. I will say using a the heat uh, toaster oven was way easier than anything we've done. Mm -hmm. It's fast. Does she see a ball through the door? No. Okay, and I don't know what She's it is. just barking. Alright, so we're going to grab this color again. She never barks until we go live. Gotta love our little pups. Huh, Shawnee? Absolutely. For those of you that do follow our pups, make sure to check out our Instagram page, not this page, our Chocotour Instagram page, or our uh, Ken's Creations Choc... Jeez. Do you want to tell them what I'm saying, Sean? Ken's Creations. As we are <laughs> going to be featuring a fun item and a really good deal on it. Okay, so we have this one. This is going to be basically our darker undertone. So we do want to dry this really, really well because now we're going to highlight the top and that's going to be important. So we're also going to need a new paintbrush and I'm going to grab... Hi, Heidi. All right. So... Kim says it's bothering you. It's not bothering them. I know. I don't think they can't hear it as, as well as you can. It's so, you know what it is? Is It's our, I love our neighbors, don't get me wrong, but they've made a few comments about Riles and her barking because Riley goes yeah. out and immediately goes to the back corner where her boyfriend, which I found out is actually her girlfriend is, and it's not just a, it's a, like, mur like someone it's, is. And it's in, loud. It, it is, is so, so loud. loud. So loud. Okay, so you guys are going to be like, why did you just do this if you're going to do what you're going to do? So, right now you can see, here's on YouTube there. Bubble gum. Yeah, it's bubble gum, but it's very harsh. So I want to tone it down. So I'm going to, before I do my highlighting, so I'm going to spray it with a little bit of water, take a baby wipe, and just go back and forth. And what this will do is it's going to tone it down, but it's also going to pick up this from here and highlight it. Because this is a little too... It looks like Pepto Bismo, mm -hmm. doesn't it? Yes, it does. I just took some. Good old Pepto. Sean went all the way to Costco to get me heartburn meds, which I used to take Zantac, and now I'm taking Pepsid AC, 
And he comes back with Prilosec for himself and forgot. <laughs> he goes, sometimes I just get there and I... I get I overwhelmed. I get overwhelmed with everything. And I'm like, okay, I'm not going to get mad. I'll just be in pain through my whole life. Sorry. <laughs> okay, so... I'm gonna dry brush. Now, dry brush on this, I'm using actually Dixie Bells. I think they call this their bell brush, maybe? Yes, it's the bell brush. Okay. And we're gonna do some highlighting on that. So, you don't need a ton on your brush. Basically, you're gonna dip it and get the extra off, and it'll look like it's barely even putting anything on, and that means You've gotten it to the right. You can tell there's two different types because one's darker than the other, so you can, you can see the difference. Now, when you're doing a dry brush technique like this, it's drying pretty quick. So a lot of people will say, you always say you can uh, dry in between your layers, but I don't, you know, when you dry brush, you're not drying. It's because the, the paint dries so quick. Because we're really, I mean, look, we're not putting a ton on. No. So, and we're going to end up doing two layers after this. So, you're not too worried about the aesthetics right here. But you can see the big difference. Look at it before. But see how we got those colors of those undertones underneath it there? That's what we want. Right? Yes, I got an A for effort at least. For what? Going. You did. He dropped everything. He went. He also got um, our Club Couture gifts. Yep. So every quarter we give our Club Couture members happy mail. And we came up with a theme. And part of my theme was something we had to get at Costco. And I was like, oh, go get those now. They're on sale. And I was like, while you're there, get this. And you can get what he always... Sean loves going to Costco and going to the um, section of dinners like all you have to do is throw them in throw and tonight's and decisions were chicken pot pie shepherd's pie shepherd's pie or uh yeah. and i i there's one i really did want but i was like you choose so we'll see if he chose the right one meatloaf and <gasps> yeah meatloaf their meatloaf is the only meatloaf i like it's really good it actually it's is very so good, good. costco's overwhelming says Potima. it is so it, overwhelming it, is. it can be okay so we're gonna now dry this but they don't have the chicken chunks that are like the ones at um, Chick-fil-A. You remember? You? Oh, bare naked chicken. Bare yeah. naked chicken. They're everyone at in, Costco, but just not at ours. Not at ours. And everyone in Utah, it's yeah, has it. It is sad. I agree so with you, sad. Sean. So sad. Okay. Yes, the chicken pot pie is amazing. That crust. Uh, I don't know how they make that crust, but it's so good. It's crack. It's crack. Crust. Even crack corn, and he don't care. Um. Yes, the shepherd pie is very good as well. It's really I good. wasn't as big a fan of the shepherd pie as I was the pot pie. And I'm not a big pot pie fan. I would say pot pie is, is a little better, but that shepherd pie is actually very good. Okay, so I am using this now. The And all I'm doing is oh, taking... Oh, your black glaze. Yeah. All I'm doing is taking a one-inch brush we got at the Dollar Tree, cut okay. it down, and I'm going to pounce all the way down with it like so on all angles and what this is going to do is it's going to give it a nice distressed look once again you can dry this to to cure it you can air dry you can buff it off but what we're going to do is put this on and then literally you just go back and forward with a brush and it I'm not looking for a ton. I don't want it to be black. I just want that nice distressed look. Because we're going to end up going back over it one more time with one more color. Um, Angela says they have them at hers. Lucky. Well, and what's funny is they, Sean will go up and talk to like the poor little checker who's like not has no idea what's the, going uh, on or customer service. You gotta, you gotta the talk, red vest you people. Talk to the red vest people. And he's like, why don't we have this? Mm. I have many friends in Salt Lake City that have this. They have them in their freezer. They also have these popsicles that I want. And they tell him the same thing every time, sir. Please fill out our... I have filled out your customer service. He has not filled it out. I don't even know if he knows where to go put that idea. Mm. There's an idea box. You're supposed to go in and it says, have a suggestion. Want to thank a team member? You're supposed to do that. <clears throat> Just saying. Just saying. 
All right, I'm gonna go off uh, camera to dry. Uh-oh. You're the grumpy old man. Well, he made it sound worse than it really was. I just went up to the right guy and said, hey, um... On TikTok. Because <laughs> yeah. that's how we found it. Well, I found out about it on TikTok. And then Brenda, who is one of my Chalk Couture peeps, um, post on her page saying, these really do taste like Chick-fil-A. And Sean was like, what? 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 Where do I get these at? And I was like, ours doesn't have it. So I just went up to the red guy and said, hey, um, some Costco's. They're, they have names. They're and not called they, the red guys. Well, they're supervisors and whatnot. But they said they actually had them, like, back in the fall. Mm-hmm. I said. Very sad, Sean. I, said, I think, I said, and they're becoming so popular on online. They said, well, it's very possible they might come back. So I doubt said, it. So I've been, so every time I go there, I look. But you know what, Sean? A year ago, we were going to Costco and waiting weeks and weeks for toilet paper. So we got it. We got to take a win when we can, you know. Yeah. yeah. So now, Holly says she makes the best shepherd pie. Well, there she, you go. She says so herself. Um, I am finishing this by doing a last bit of whatever color this was. It's basically the lightest pink, besides that one that was super close to the Champagne white. Champagne pink. Champagne pink. And what this is doing is, it's kind of covering, you can see the difference between the two. It does cover the grunge, but the grunge still comes through as now more of a antique distress, which is what we want. Mm -hmm. So there's the end result, and you can see in stages how we got there. So here's the thing on painting that I feel intimidates Sean and Jazzy is painting is one of those things I really feel like in the middle stages of painting, it looks like crap. You're like, I did not do a good job. And then you start doing your dry brushing and getting those layers and it dries. And then all of a sudden you're like, okay, I'm feeling it. That's how I feel. But Sean and Jazzy sometimes don't feel that way. You do a good dry brush, mm -hmm. I think. Don't you feel like you do? I think I do. I think you do too, Shawnee. All right, so let's see. That one looks good, and we might do some touch-ups. You can see a probably better viewpoint. Anywhere need it more than the other? Mm, looks really good. Okay, so I'm going to then lay these out to kind of start drying. We'll put them right here. going to go... Put this mat in water. A lot of this, I will tell you, this paint does go a long way, and so does the uh, their uh, glaze. Mm -hmm. They have um, black, which is the blue color, and then they have one called Van Dyke Brown, which is probably my second favorite, and then my third would be the uh, grunge. Grunge is really cool. It's really nice. It's kind of a mixture of brown and black together. Yeah. Maybe it's over here. Little, over here. Little, hints, little hints of green. We have to do uh, shelving on our walls. Yes, yeah, we're running out of shelves. So we're going to put some kind of shelving. Small, skinny unit over here. We're just using the scrubby, which is made for cleaning up paint and stuff. Yep, so I put it on the foundation of the scrubby. You can get it at multiple places. And then I actually just use our board erasers. And it will get all that paint off. And this will work even a couple days later. Um, we've had some paint not come off, but it would be like on there for weeks. But our board erasers I use for so much more than just um, cleaning boards. So anytime when they're in stock, whenever, literally whenever I place an order for myself, I always add like five packs of these if they're in stock. Because in my opinion, you can never have too many. Sean uses them for everything, between the sink, everything. So 
they're saying, Sean, you have to talk to the manager if they make the ordering decisions or call court Ooh. customer service. Ooh, Sean. The poor red vest persons can't do anything poor about red that vest. smile. <laughs> poor red vest. Well, that people. sounds like a good idea, then. Okay, we are now going to start on the base. So, this is our centerpiece of so the home. The H, the M, and the E. We're not using any of this stuff up here. So I'm just gonna use my transfer trimmers to get rid of this. And because I like the spacing of my home, I'm not going to cut my letters because I like the spacing. But keep in mind, if you do not cut your letters, you still have this white little line that is open to blow. Okay. We also want to block this off. So what I mean by that is I do not want my next transfer to go uh, to block this spot. So what I'm going to do is put down some of this. This is basically like our placement tape. Um, it is Scotch Guards. Delicate. Is that what it is? And this is, I think, the thickest one that they make, so. Let's see if I can get it to see. Delicate Surface 3M. So you can buy this set. It's a little more expensive than not like the painter's tape, but uh, both Costco and um, Lowe's carry this. It's like washi tape. And of course you can see this nice three inch width one. They have a two inch and a one inch as well. Works nice. Okay, so we are going to block it right up and I'm just eyeing this hopefully these studs are in a good place we'll have to eyeball check it eyeball check it when are we getting the new puppy um, so I reached out to the lady that we, or Sean and Jazzy and Allie found, and um, she confirmed that the mom... It's pregnant. What's her name? Me, me, Maddie. Maddie. No, it's not Maddie. It's like... I don't remember. Yeah, those aren't straight, by the way. When They're you not? When you tilted it up, you can see that they, they angle off. Yeah, but the would you bend's going to be the, the thing that's straight. Oh, okay. I just don't want the pattern to go down. Is it that off? I don't think it's that off. It's very little, but it, it's not perfectly straight. Is anything in life perfect? Nope. I know you would love for things to be perfect, like our Costco to have those little chicken nuggets. Mm-hmm. But... Yeah, so they're supposed to be born sometime in the first week of April. And we get... Uh, I have to wash my hands because I piss on it. But you can show them um, what I was talking about here. And then we're going to be using... The placement tape to block those so yeah, it doesn't. So the placement tape, the stuff here, we're just gonna run it through here because this is not a white line. This is actually open, just like this is. So we'll cover those up so we don't put any paste on the board like that. Nope, it's off. It's just lingering. Hello, YouTube. Okay. I got electrolytes. Mm. My water. Yeah. Hydrate. Okay. So, this really doesn't need to be used. I mean, you can use it either way. I will tell you, check your board though because there is imperfection. So, right here you can see there's a little bit of paint I got on it. Nothing bad. But I always say like, you know, check it out. Which way do you like it? Which is going to be your favorite? So, we are going to basically be using this here and here. I don't want it to go through anywhere here, so I'm going to stencil all of this out. Or mask it all out, sorry. And you could do this the other way, meaning if you wanted to do the placement tape on top of your transfer. The only reason I'm not doing it that way is I'm going to have to wash that transfer. And the reason why is we have to use the transfer twice. The nice thing about this transfer 
and I will get out of the way so Sean can explain what I mean. This is um, the this first is time Chalk Couture has done something called a repeating okay. pattern. So as you can see, here is this part, and it goes on and on and on. And you notice that this part is missing if it went on. But if you come over here, here's the other part of it. The same for here. There's that end, and there's the matching end to that. There's that one and that one, and I'll show the YouTube people. This end again lines up with this part here. This one to that. This How bad is the crooked? Is it just the bottom that's crooked? It's just a little, I mean, if you were to truly measure it, you'll see that it's a little off. But if you're not doing anything straight, straight, then you won't worry about it. Well, I mean, I will be, but it'll be a board of the wood you bend, so hopefully yeah, it will that, that part you can do after everything's on. Okay. Because you'll do that last. So, normally, you would not have to fuzz this transfer if you were just doing it on the burlap board, because burlap technically is... Fabric. Fabric. Um, so, you normally, you wouldn't have to. However, we are going to, just because we have that placement tape, and even if it pulls it up, I'm okay with it, but this way... It just gives us a little protection. Now the repeating transfer part that Sean just explained to you all um, is very important to make sure you do it the right way. And I always tell people on these, it's always your logo in the bottom. So we are going to bring this to where it, it's gonna be kind of a hard one because it's actually going to be right in between these brads. And I do need to get this just right so it needs to go basically corner to corner. And then what we'll do is we're gonna pick this up when we're done and go wash it and repeat it. Heidi says, even if it's a little off, the wood, wood, the wood you bend will probably cover it. That's what I think too, Heidi. I like the way you think. All right. Heidi, I think it was you that, in my Ken's crew group, posted a cricket stock price. It was her. Huh? It was her. It was, wasn't it? it? Was Heidi. So we've been following that today. <laughs> it's been fun. And these brads are off, or this is off? They're off. They're not for good. Okay, well, I'm gonna have to have you look and tell me what you think. Good? Pretty good? No, nope, pretty good. Not perfect, I know, but it will work, right? It'll work. Okay. So, on anytime you're using our natural burlap, you wanna make sure you have felt for any ripples. Also, know that in my opinion, bright colors. You think bright colors would show up great on this? It doesn't. So like we used to use like the kiwi on it and stuff. It's really hard to see. White, white does all right. But, white, yeah. But light colored colors, not so much. Yeah. So I'm going to be utilizing the Storm. And this is the new paste formula. And we only really need it in the spots. Now, I went purposely with Storm because I wanted it to show, but also kind of not overpower our home design that's going to be going on the top. Kind of a muted color in the background. Yeah, but I want it darker than grayish. Um, It sounded like you were gonna ask a question and then you stopped. Um, I was gonna say something, but I don't know the answer, so. Oh, okay. Gotcha, Sean. I could probably guess and be close, but. Aye, aye, Capitan. What is the question, or is it something we need to nope. address after the live, or are we good? Nope. we're good. Okay. We're good. So yeah, today, how many wings did we order? Not us, but in um, general. It was, it, maybe, everyone was waiting for those wings, let me tell you. I think I ordered probably, for our Club Couture people, maybe six of them. They are so pretty. 
I think it's the wings are just a great piece and they're mm -hmm. they're a perfect understated piece. So all right, so I'm gonna go ahead and lift this up. And I'm gonna be very careful not to try to lift up that. And then I'm gonna go wash this. We can start letting this air dry because we do need to do the repeating pattern down here. So I'll be mm -hmm. right back. We'll wash how we how we wash. Okay, so this is how I wash the new water-based transfers. And I was taught this to Jazzy and Sean because it really does make a difference. I like to get all my paste off with my hands first before using a board eraser. Why is that fun? Um, we find that your hand kind of rubs it off better than using the, the board. And it doesn't, it keeps it, it keeps, you know, really, it does. I know, but the way you say it, your hand rubs it off. Okay. I know. So if the, the, the better way of saying it is if you don't do this, you have all this paste sitting on top of your transfer, and when you go eat your board eraser, your board eraser is going to absorb all that paste. And it's going to almost turn it into kind of a, I don't want to say a fuzzy feel on the transfer, but it, it leaves a residue behind. Mm -hmm. um, also, this new paste is awesome. It's creamy, dreamy. It is very pigmented. So we found that if we don't wash it with our hands first and just put it right into our bed, it will stay in our bed. We've had to clean it multiple times. Once I washed it off with my hands, like so, then I'll grab a board eraser. And you notice that I'm never really putting the water directly on top of it because these are a water-based transfer. So that means instead of using the chemicals that they normally make, make soap screens, they're using water. So water, letting it sit in water too long, soaks it up, can potentially ruin it. ruin it. Then I flip it over. I'm gonna take my board eraser off to the side, rinse it out so it's nice and clean. Now we have found with the new paste, reds, yellows, and blacks. I haven't tried purple yet because it hasn't come in stock, but those colors will naturally just stain your transfers, and that's okay. And then we're just going to... Now, if I wasn't using this right away, I would um, just put it then... Uh, we have a drying rack out there. Out there somewhere. We would just put it sticky side up and call it good. But we're using it again. So I'm gonna show you how I dry my transfers if we're gonna use it again. So if you do not have a workbench like we have here, you can use our self-healing cutting mat, which is what we used to paint. Um, this is just how I do it. Other designers probably do it a completely different way. This is what works for me. I take the four inch squeegee. It, in my opinion, does need to be the new four inch squeegee. Here's why. The old four inch squeegee is a hard rubber. This is a nice, flexible sock. So I have had this old squeegee tear um, my transfers and the new squeegee is a lot, not saying it wouldn't do it, but it's a lot more gentle. And so I'm just squeegeeing out the water. And this is why you want to do it either on a self-heating cutting mat or a, you don't want to do it on something that has like a lamb in it that could pull up or a, like some counters, they look like they're a countertop, but they're like a vinyl or a sticker. And I did not do a good job cleaning there. That's okay. Okay, so then what I do before anything is I'm going to grab a towel, a fuzzing cloth, whatever you like that absorbs the water the best. Cause that's really what you want this to do is absorb the water. I love our fuzzing cloths. They're not the best towel for absorbing moisture. They're more for fuzzing it, um, you know, getting that tackiness. So I tend to use a towel that's known for absorbing. Now we're gonna put it sticky side up. And because this is a D transfer, we're gonna put two fuzzing cloths on it. One there. One there. And then I'm gonna flip it over. 
And this one's still pretty wet, so I'm gonna let it dry. While I'm letting it dry, we have to dry our board anyways. So I'll put it off to the side. And then I'm gonna let Sean get in there real quick before I start drying it, just to show you how detailed it is. And Berber, our, our uh, no, not Berber. Burlap. <laughs> Berber is what we're looking at for our basement. No, we're not. I know. Um, burlap, your, your paste and ink take longer to dry because it is essentially a fabric. You can use ink and set it. Ink and set it. And then you went to go get the doggy. You need to stop barking. You are driving me up a wall. Hey, little girl. CC. Sierra. Can you get down, please? Thank you. Off. Good girl. So where did you put? Oh, it's right here. I wanted to show them while I'm drying this. This will be a video soon, but we made this and Sean literally came to me and said, why are you using ink here? Our ink, in my opinion, shimmer ink especially, is way more um, reflective. So we actually used ink on these new cutting boards of ours and then heat set it. Yep. And it worked great. Yep. All right, we have to dry this thing. <clears throat> this is our quick dry tool. It is not an embossing gun. I know it looks like an embossing gun. It sounds like an embossing gun. It feels like an embossing gun. Sean, is it, is it an not. embossing gun? It is not. So, this is our quick dry tool. It does just that. It's supposed to quick dry. Love it. I only have one critique. It's got a three foot cord, not long enough. But I do like it for drying. So it has a, uh, two settings, low and high. There is no temperature difference. Here's the low. Here's the high. So we're gonna put it on the high and we're just gonna go, especially down here. Is her balls up there? Cause she knows they're up there then. One, it's only one. Huh? It's only one. She's not gonna stop. You know you have to go put them upstairs. I'm not I'll go do it. Here. Sorry guys, she won't stop if she knows the balls here. Where is it? It's up on the Lego thing. On the deck. Up on the lip. Oh, yeah. On the deck. You, you have issues, okay? You need to deal with these issues. So this is Storm, the color Storm. Now this heat shield is only gets 150 degrees. A hair dryer gets to about 195, but it's so noisy and so bl and, and blows everything off your counter. Can I have that? Thank you. Where'd she get this? I don't know. Just grab it. I love you, Cece, but you you test me. I don't know how people have kids. I really don't. We're good. Nice. Thank you, Sean. You're welcome. You're simply the best. Okay. Uh-oh. So we started it that way, right? Yes. Okay. Okay, so we're gonna grab our transfer. It's had time to dry. And we're going to do the repeating pattern. Now, what does that mean again, Sean? It repeats and repeats without having any breaks. So, to show, to tell you for more on that, let's go to our reporter out in the field, Ken. I want to show you guys what I mean by that. Follow me, Sean. YouTube will be right back, I promise. Not a repeating pattern, and you can tell because there's the break. Yeah, there's the break there. Okay, YouTube, it's just you, me, and the dogs. 
It's time to line this bad boy up. What? Heidi got their solar power put in. Who did? Heidi. Ooh, nice. Busy getting solar power. That is where the future is going, dude. Mm -hmm. Dude, you're getting a deal. Okay, so we're just lining it up, as Sean said, and it should line up all the way down. I'm wearing my shirt that's magnet, so it keeps on clink. Man, it's hard to see this gray on this purple tape. I hope that's... Ooh. Yeah, you can't, you can barely see it on the purple. Oh. That's about good, right? Can you see it go wide or not really? Not from where I'm standing, sorry. Yeah, there's okay. I would figure as long as you can see just a just a little bit of it on there, and if you crossed it over, it should be fine. I think it's gonna be fine. If anything, we'll just connect it with a paintbrush. Huh. Mm-hmm. Mm, needs to go up a little, unless I'm crazy. Which, don't answer that. You already know the answer. Spoiler alert, I am. Okay, I think that's pretty good. I think it's going to be beautiful. It will. It will be beautiful. So, this would be easier, of course, if it was a chalkboard because we would be able to see it against, obviously, gray storm against... The burlap is a little harder, but that's okay. So I'm just making sure there's no, especially where you're chalking. We're not too worried about the placement area, but we are. Here we go. So we do have a little bit over there. We want to make sure we get... And then we do have just a little right there, which I don't think would be a big deal if we lock, didn't do it, but we're going to try our best. Did you hear my buttons? Mm -hmm. <laughs> we got these uh, shirts at Duluth. Duluth Trading. And we love them, but they Sean really loves them because they have magnets to button. You can just go and button them and unbutton them. But... Anywhere that there is a magnet attraction, your shirt goes clunk. And I don't think people with like heart, like what is it? They can't, if you have a heart, something you can't wear the magnet shirts. You have a pacemaker. Yeah, why? Uh, magnet, Magnets does things. Magnet, yeah, it'll kind of ruin the pacemaker. <laughs> oh, well, that would be bad. Yeah. Oh, you're welcome, Kim. You guys make my day. I've had a bad day, and you guys um, make me laugh. So thank you. I have been, I know what it's like, because I've had a headache all day long, and I don't know if it's I'm dehydrated. I think it's my, Sean says it's the knots on my back. He says he can feel them, and they're pretty bad. How bad are they, Sean? They're pretty big. Oh. Look at that. Nailed it. Nailed it. Okay, I'm going to go wash this. I'll, I'll be right dry. back. I'm going to dry, so I'm going to come over here real quick. Grab the heating too well. I'll take you to the candy shop. Mm, some sleepy puppies.
tuckered out now, but when she has that ball in her mouth, she's a psycho. But look at her now. Look at her now. She's all. She's all calm. All nice and calm. Game over. Yeah, game over when she's got a ball in her mouth, or even anything in her mouth, really. Thank you for being a good girl. Thank you. You cutie. Thank you, Sean. Welcome. Thank you. Quick dry tool. We love it. Okay, so I do want for those watching or watching on YouTube to give you guys some pointers. We've had the new pace now for roughly two months almost. Almost two months. So is it creamy dreamy? Yes. Is it amazing? Yes. Is it... People have said, oh, I'm never going to have to add water or it can dry out. So here's the deal. If you do not clean your jars, you will not get a good seal and this will happen. It will go from a creamy dreamy and it will get kind of like if eggs sit out too long, you get that little film on it. It still is fine, but it then has lumps in it. And we all know one of the great things about this new paste is it's creamy, dreamy, and no lumps. So, Sean and I, after using it um, for two months, and me not cleaning my jars or lids, we could tell, in fact, if you open the bumblebee, which I can, you can tell that we, we haven't been cleaning them because we've been testing it. And we could really see it with our pistachio, and our bumblebee. It's great paste, but you can see if we don't clean it, it will collect on the side. So we still recommend cleaning, cleaning up. clean your jars. It just looks prettier when you open it. It does look prettier, but what it's gonna do for you is it's going to make this creamy dreamy paste, which we love, last the longest. So we still recommend doing one squirt of water, taking your stir stick and stirring it in here. And if you do have lumps, I just kind of do this. It's now not, it's, it's not a dry lump. It's just it's not the old lumps. It is no, like a lumps. film that sets in there. Just just like that is all you need to do. And I just put one final spray like that, and literally, and it starts to settle on its own. I'm gonna go clean that little bit right back. Okay. Um, what else have we noticed on this that you? Um. Even though you can leave this open, the nice thing is that you can leave the lids off for a, a few hours and you don't really even have to worry about, you know, covering it up or the old stuff you would. So that's very nice. Um, if it's something, yeah, if it's a color you're not using well, just make sure it's really clean and sealed well when you put the lid on. Yeah. These lids are temporary. So yes. the lids that these have in it um, on YouTube and Insta is temporary we will have the lids back that have the plastic inside that you don't have to do um it's just a it's a COVID thing i guess okay but i love it so much that i am in the process of getting it for we're replacing all of our ink we like it that much or yes. our paste sorry all right we're gonna remove this this is the mask that we had And I like the pattern on the top better, so I'm going to turn it around. And you are right, it's crooked, but I don't think it's... I don't think it matters. Yeah, we might take paintbrush up here. This will be fixed by the wood you bend. It is a little crooked, but I can take a little bit of paintbrush and fix that. I'm not worried about that. So now we can do our O-M-E. Now I am putting this on here, so I do not need to worry about fuzzing it because this is technically fabric but I do want to make sure this is pretty centered so what I will do is take the camera and have Sean he is so much patient more patient and doing this what am I doing 
Just making sure it's centered and not crooked, because you know me. Mm -hmm. Everyone on YouTube there can say hi. See my head? See his head. See, look at how patient you are. You know what he's thinking right now? He's saying, I swear to goodness, if anything is crooked or wrong, I'm in the doghouse. This has to be perfect. Sean, I will love it no matter what. There you go. Thank you. Okay, give you back the camera. You are my hero. Okay, I'm going to make him take a look at his own work. Are you not happy with it, Sean? No, it looks like it's going up. Okay. Well, that's okay. You know why? We can fix it. Can we fix it? Yes, we can. What's that from? Do you know? Bob the Builder. Bob the Builder. Oh my gosh, I can't believe you remember that. I've never seen it. I mean, I've yes, seen well, you... bits and pieces of it. Alex Benny, or Alex's first party was kind of not Bob. themed after him, but kind of. Mm -hmm. We did a whole bulldozer theme. He was Alex the Builder. Can he build it? Yes, he can. You've got the thing tilted. That looks good. It does? Mm -hmm. We've gotten Shawnee approval. No, I trust you. Okay. So. What's we, the name of this transfer? This one's called Bless Our Home. Bless our home wreath. So we do need to cover these up because these are the cut lines and they will come through if we don't cover them up. And because this is a burlap, I'm going to put placement tape on the top and the bottom, not mm -hmm. because I want to hold it in place. This is giving me um, an insurance that if I accidentally go off of the transfer, I don't want it to stain that burlap. Okay, and the paste will, even though the paste technically it's not a stain, it will stain it. Believe me. The black is... A, di a dye is a dye, no matter what it's... It is. It's a good dye, let me tell you. Mm -hmm. All right. So we're going to start with our H. So the one trick I will always say, because I don't, I, I'll be honest, I don't use the burlap boards enough just because um, I just was never in love with them. And I think the first few times I did it, I made the mistake of going with the burlap going this way. And I quickly found that was a mistake because what it does is it seeps on you. And that could have been maybe the old pace. I don't know. Um, but it just, it has a different feel to it. Um... And I have you almost have to treat it more like it's a material and what you're working with is ink. So um, but I do think this new paste works a lot better with our burlap than the old paste. Um I don't know what he's asked, but just um oh sorry, just asked, are you using ink or paste? We're using paste. Yes, you could use ink, but you really can't heat set this per se. Um I would be hesitant to do that. Why? Heat setting it? Yeah. It's got a board under it. True. So on a burlap board, just to let you guys know, it will absorb your paste. Um, so you will go through a little bit more paste. It's just a fabric. And I am going to start lifting it now because it dries quicker on this. So I'm going to test it to see if I lift. I'm not, so I'm okay. So I'm going to continue with my E. So if you ever feel like something is drying too quick and you need to pull uh, your transfer off, um, pull up a corner and see what it looks like. And that will give you your answer. Now, as soon as we are done pulling this up, I'm going to have you guys follow me to watch me clean this because this is black and I can show you exactly what I'm talking about about how you can clean, 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 and still not get it all the way Watch out. your fingers. You got um, paste on them. Okay. 
So we have a little area here that I'm going to have to clean up, but um, I'll show you how you do that. But we are going to clean this first. So, to not stress this enough, you definitely want to run this underwater. And the reason why, I'm just going to show you just for, if you do what you normally have done, and said, oh, I'm going to clean it, and go like this, this is what happens. It will stain your sink. And it will stain. So, it's, in my opinion, way better to do this. If you have this nozzle... It'll make it a lot easier to take a little more pressure against it. So let's see. Is that why it would seep on an art canvas? Yes. It could, if you, if you don't have a good seal all so the way So where it seeped on my age is because I did exactly what I said I wasn't going to do, and I went this way. And that's the reason why. Okay, so you're going to try to get this as, as the majority of it off as you can, obviously. And then, I can't stress this enough, you want to clean your sink. Because look at, I mean, just how much it stains. So, I'll show you how we clean that, but then we put it, if you have a stain that you really want to get out, I always recommend getting a new, because it's going to get the stain off a lot better. New border eraser. So I usually get a new board eraser if I've used a lot of black on a transfer, or um, we're cleaning our, you know, but see, that's what the new case does to our board erasers. It's not a bad thing, it just, our board erasers really is drawn to it and it just absorbs it. And it's not a good or bad thing, it's just retraining ourselves. And here's the deal I know a lot of us. We want our transfers to look pretty and new. At the end of the day, as long as you clean the front, you clean the back, and you pretty much cleaned out the actual silk screen part, if it stains anywhere else, you're fine. You're fine. So I'm going to flip it over. Now normally, um, we would be doing these as each individual letter, so uh, it wouldn't be as dramatic, but you can really see, I don't know if you can see on this, you can. You can. Oh, yeah. like on the M, watch how it, you can see it get clean. So, I'll do half the M. This is why you do both sides. This is why you do both sides. People always say, why do I do both sides? Because of that. If you don't do both sides, your transfer will not last and you'll get stains on your next project, possibly. I'll do one final rinse under this. And I get a lot of people that say, Ken, do you know your lives are so long because of the amount of time you spend cleaning transfers and yada and this? And I'm like, well, it's worth it because we invest good money in our transfers, our product, and we want it to last. So once it is, that's what... And then, well, I'm going to go in there, Shawnee, to fix my mistake, or sorry, to fix my mistake, you can show them this. Okay. This is what Shawnee has told me to use when you do have hard stains. Love it, stop. He loves it. He loves it. Loves it. That looks great. Let's look at her. She is out. So we really cannot clean this. So my only options is we are going to grab ink or paste, probably ink though, and we're going to fix it. But we're not going to fix it until the very end because no matter how 
great of a job I do uh, fixing it, it will take a long time to dry. As you can see, like, um, I don't know if you can show them the, the difference in the glossiness from the black to the... Oh yeah, it's glossy. Yeah. All right, give me one second. I'm gonna clean Sean's jar here. So on a clean jar, per Sean's instructions, you use the hockey puck stick in, sorry, I wanna make sure we get this on YouTube. You use the puck, hockey puck end of the multi-tool to get all the way under there like so. Bring it all to the center. Bring it all to the center like that. He then has me grab a baby wipe. And as long as you do this right after you're done using it, you shouldn't have to get like a scouring brush to get the sides and no, stuff but basically because it doesn't dry that hard anymore. it doesn't yeah so then and then it doesn't take as much but we still just do about one teeny little squirt teeny squirt stir it just like that and then normally we would have done a full squirt stirred it and a couple more squirts on top we only do a half and a half and then normally we'd clean that lid but these are foam lids they they uh, yeah. I have to go wash my hands now. What is it, Sean? Is everything okay? I'm going to answer a question. Oh, my goodness. We use the scratchy side when we're trying to clean um, the transfers that have maybe uh, glitter or the shimmer paste. Make sure you clarify what scratchy means. So the, there's a soft side and a scratchy side on those sponges. So I'll show you real quick, Mike. Are you showing them the Enviro? Yeah. Yeah. I am going to fix, there is a few spots. The nice thing about the um, burlap boards is you can fix mistakes on the inside super easy. Just grab a bullet paintbrush like this and it, because it absorbs the paste so quickly, you literally just touch it and it, it I mean look, it just absorbs it. So to fix mistakes like that, super easy. Easy, easy peasy. Because if you see, once again, I'm just barely putting it on there and it just, it, it's, it loves our paste. So it just suck, soaks it in. You could technically use our ink on it and heat set it because our, uh, I wanna keep calling these burlaps, but they're not. Our, um, what are these called? Why do I wanna keep saying burlap? Because it is no, burlap. No, it is burlap. It is I keep on wanting to say Berber. Berber is carpet, which we have out there in the, in the room, which is mm -hmm. gross. Um, now I forgot what I was going to say. Mm -hmm. Oh, it has a piece of wood under it. So you could, it's, see? So it's not flimsy. It, it's solid. Mm -hmm. All right. So we're going to let this dry before we fix these areas. So next thing we can do is start working on the... Would you bend that we're gonna put on? So let's grab the one that's not broken first. Okay, so we can see we need to it's me. warm it up. So I'm just gonna go on the hair, uh, high setting on a hair dryer. Well, actually, first I'm gonna turn on my hot glue gun. So, we need to fix it a little bit, so I want to kind of measure it before we do this. Oh, so their, their studs are not even at all, nope. are they? Nope. Well, shit on a shingle. 
<laughs> um, shoot. I was really using this as my guide. So, if I want to fix this, and if I do five inches, okay, that's what I'll do. And then we'll just do the five inches down there. That's what we'll have to do. Okay, so you can use hot glue. You can use, you know what, maybe we shouldn't use hot glue. Maybe I should just use uh, my, uh, you know, hot glue. Okay, I'm getting the other, the other one's too thin and it's not gonna work. Not good, is what I'm hearing, not good. So I do want this to be right under this though, and I don't know. So if I want it to be right under that, what do you think? I'd rather it be under that one and then I straighten it up because if not, I would have to do it above or on it. Or you can go just on the inside of the braid or the brad. I don't, I want it to go end to end. So, and the brad itself could be a little crooked too. Mm -hmm. So we'll start on this end. You know what? Maybe you're right, Sean. Maybe I just go a little bit, or I could carve out the brad or even really wood it bend on it. What do you think? And go underneath it. Okay. So we're going to start this one as close up underneath this one as we can. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna heat this and twist it before we heat, before we glue it down. So this way we can make sure it's straight and stuff. But we have to wait for my hot glue gun to heat up. So while that one's heating up, we also have this one that we have. So we'll go ahead and So it really is that simple, isn't it? Mm -hmm. Isn't it? So um, to fix this, since we have this time while I was doing stuff, um, I would just use grige, uh, or not grige, um, storm ink with white and bring it down to that grayish color. I would do ink just because the paste is going to give it a dull, or ink won't. Um, but you can see I don't have grayish because it's a color that is. Oh wait, maybe I do. You have some up there. Is that grayish or is that on your up Ooh, on, on the other side? No, that's that's paste. Ink is on the other side. That's storm. That's storm. I, there is no grayish paste or grayish ink. All right. But I thought I had a grayish. There's none over there. No. Oh man. That's so sad. I'm so sad now. Oh well. So let's try a little bit. Might as well. We got some time while that glues. What is that called and where can I find it? What, Chocoholic, what are we talking about? Are we talking about the Would You Bend? Ooh, I'm matching the frickin' counter like mad. Ooh, we're getting there. I know all of you are like, don't put your pen or your thing in there. It's going to contaminate it. I know. I know. We almost need a little black. I don't know. I don't know. I don't so, know, Sean. So this is called Would, oh, would You Bend? We're talking about something else. No, different. All right, gotcha. Answer any question. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. That's giving me good... What is this called? Berber vibes or burlap vibes? Burlap. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. I'm liking it. Are you liking it? We need to lighten mm -hmm. it a little. But we're getting there. So unfortunately, this is kind of the only way you can fix a mistake on... Or you just say... The heck with it and leave it. Yeah. It's a homemade item. And it's beautiful because I made it. And it's beautifully broken. But you can do ink. 
Um, you just want to make sure it is watered down and obviously you try to get it to match and you want to use as little as possible. Um, and I'll show you what I mean by that here in a sec. Oh, we are so close. We're so close, Shawnee. Mm -hmm. I hope YouTube can see this. If not, I apologize. Um, yeah, I can see it. Okay. So once you've done that, you can grab a squeegee. This will do its final incorporation. So this way, if you're afraid you didn't mix it good enough, you can grab one of these, bring it to the center and see how it's nice and incorporated. And we have a really pretty close color. So what you do to fix this, and when I say not a lot, you want not a lot on your brush and you just want to go in dab it get out dab it get out and clean your brush constantly because it's going to pick up that paste that you had the reason you want to dab it and not go like this is as soon as i put this down it is going to rehydrate the paste underneath of it and I will then have a streak of black, which is what we want to avoid. Is that I can't, it's at an angle for me. So does it need to, just need to go be straightened up? up? Just a little bit more on your side. side. Yeah. Oh, that's what you're saying. Okay. So this is how I, the only way I fix. And you do not want to use too much because you can already see here. I know it's hard on YouTube, but on Instagram, it, what happens is it's, it's grabbing the fibers and it's going to bring them up. And it's drawing a little lighter than I want it. So I'm just going to add the smallest amount of black in there. Here we go. We're going to let that dry because it's going to dry a little different looking. From afar, you would never even know. You wouldn't. So that's my tip on fixing itty bitty mistakes. Let's do our quick dry tool. And it's really hard to tell in Berber, or dang it, burlap, because now that we put paste on there, it's wet. So you've wet the burlap all around. And so now it's going to take, you, you can't really gauge it until you really dry it. So we're going to let it chillax. And now our hot glue is ready to go. I'm going to take, because if I'm not happy with my fix, I want to save this color, because that's the color we use. So I'm going to grab a color tray. I'm going to put that extra color that we created until we know we got it exactly where we want it in that color tray. I know it doesn't look like a lot, but it will be enough for what we need it. And then we can clean up our ink. So that way we are going to contaminate poor pistachio. Pistachio down. He just pistachio gave his down. life for us, Sean. I need to take a drink. Oh, I forgot how good the strawberry watermelon is. It is good. One of my faves. You turned me on to it. Okay, so we're gonna do, would you bend now? Okay, so what I do on YouTube and Instagram is I'm gonna start it by adding just the tiniest bit of hot glue on the end. And we're gonna place that first. And we're gonna place it as close to the end and I'm just gonna hold it there for a couple seconds. Because what we're gonna end up doing is, essentially, you're anchoring this. We wanna anchor this so this way we can hold this and use our hair dryer and we can manipulate this all the way down until we have a nice straight line. And almost use your other dryer, the little 
embossing one. Oh yeah, okay. It's not as loud. It's, it gets pretty warm. The not the wig or heat. No, the, the, yeah, the, the small wig one, the gray one. Should be in the corner edge there. Yeah, that one. This one works really nicely too. So this is the updated Wagner embossing gun for like embossing powders. And really all they changed is they gave it more of a natural like tilt to it, which is nice. Mm -hmm. And it's got two settings. So we want to actually heat this up pretty good because what we're gonna end up doing is lifting it up and you can see how much it's bending now, adding my glue very gently and then hoping I get it pretty straight. Does that look good? I know the rest of it doesn't, but does it? Okay, mm -hmm. so that's what you're gonna do down the whole process on something like this that's has so much at play like it's got this going and we want to make sure it's straight so you're just going to take it section by section and you need to heat it like that so you get that nice bend in it hence the name and then we can even with the hot glue on it, if it's not what you like, you can actually still bend, stretch. Is that good though? I can't really tell. It looks like it is. Yeah. Okay. So literally, you're gonna do that all the way. So you're gonna go to your last anchor point, grab your embossing gun. The quick dry tool would not be hot enough to do this, so you would need a hair dryer. An embossing gun. Um, just be careful using the real hot ones because they it will burn the wood. And, and once it. you attach it, you of course can't put it in your toaster oven. So yeah. the uh, heat dry tool would probably work, but you would have to be there for a long time for it to finally get to mm -hmm. the point where it's soft. And then if you do get glue outside where you don't want it, we just use our mini squeegee and tuck it back under there. So that's what's nice on this is you get some good time to play with it. It just started going up, but I think you're all right. So it, I'm still moving. It, so it's hard for me to tell at this angle. That's yeah. why I'm. I know it's it's hard when it's lying down. Yeah, if you can come down a little bit, just a little bit before it dries, if you can. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Now we have some hot glue on the outside there. No big deal. Grab your mini squeegee and we can actually on this, while this is still a little warm, go in there with a Zacto knife or whatever and it should just peel off. Here we go. Well, it should. There it goes. Okay. So we're going to do the final point here. So we want to heat this whole thing. I'm dripping on my table. Yeah. Okay. Scraper work now. It does. So since this is literally we're gonna be gluing it down, I will pull it up and see if I need to go up or down or whatever. Um I love your facial expressions. You know your your facial expression just gave me? What? It looks fucked up, but we gotta no. keep going with it. <laughs> I mean, again, we know this is not going to be perfectly straight, but because oh, words are powerful. I, I did, I'm, I'm trying to be truthful too. 
Sometimes being truthful hurts. I'm sorry. And you need to learn from Ali and Chatsy <laughs> and say, it looks beautiful. No, it looks great. It does. Let's take a poll. Did we say that? <laughs> no. We did not say that. He went, oh. It's these, it's their brads are way off. They're way off, yeah. Man. Oh, well, once the wreath gets on there, we'll be good. Yeah, it'll look beautiful with that wreath. Okay, so we're done with this one. And let's do the bottom one real quick. And then all we have to do is attach the wreath. And this is already still warm, so I can literally just take my snips. There voila. we go. Voila. Oh, we're going to be fine once the wreath gets on there. Fine. Actually, we might heat that and pull that up just a smidge, but that's we'll figure it out. Okay, so... Pretends the broken end. Huh? Pretends the broken end. This one? What? Which I can't hear you when the hair is on. Which one's the broken end? Right here. Beauty. Yeah. All right, so I can eyeball this one much better. Love that shade of pink. I know, isn't it pretty? Kind of a blushy pink. Oh, this one's way easier to do. Okay. So we're going to add our... Like I always call it, your anchor piece of glue. And we're going to put that right here. And I'm just going to hold that for a few seconds. And this one, actually I think, now that that's there, it's not, this one just needs to go up. We're going to, we're going to heat that and move it up. I made a decision. <laughs> oh, it's so much easier when I'm looking at it this way. Okay. So we're going to heat. See, look at it. You can barely see it now. It's drying. Nice. See our mistake area? Yeah. That's what go. you want. See, I should have went with my gut on this and done super glue. I think hot glue is way too hard because it catches the Berber fibers. Um, but this is how we went, right? So I am going to just do this whole big schloop and we're going to do it in one go. So as long as you play with it, it's it's gonna sound dirty, I know, but like it's still warm enough to where it's malleable and you can. Okay. Yep. That looks okay. That looks really good. All right. See how easy it is to lie to me, Sean. Oh, it looks good. It's very, very good. <laughs> I'm just giving you a hard time. No thanks. I'm just playing, Sean. Just playing. Okay, so we do have to anchor this because it broke. And literally, all we have to do is place that one down. By doing that, the glue's already come out, but this is solid, so I need to heat it. And it doesn't take much on these little pieces. And you can see where it broke right there. So, we're gonna just put a tiniest bit of hot glue on there and tuck it right under there. And you won't even know it was broken. And now we're going to heat it and push on it. So it heats the wood and then that hot glue uses the fibers and you won't even know that it was ever broken there. But we still need to finish this end, which is our final little piece. Looking forward to seeing you in Park City. I can't wait. I have to tell you, I I always look forward to hanging out with Teresa because like I would go down there just just cause. 
I love hanging out with her. But I've never been to Park City to actually stay. And as bad as this sounds, I got down there and I was only teaching classes and Sean was, uh, forgot, he was doing the live broadcast. He was doing all the lives. Like so there was now. many times I was there by myself in the room. It was wonderful. Yeah. Beautiful place. I loved it. Okay, I do want to fix this before we put our thing on there, but let's take a look at this. Should we try to fix that, or what do you think now? I think it's fine. Okay. I think with all the stuff going on with it... Yeah, I agree. You're not going to be drawn to it. You're going to be drawn to the uh, the wreath. Yeah. Okay, so we're just going to fix this little part over here that was a little bit on a darker side. And then Kim says, I can't wait to see you at Chocolate. I know. I just got done doing their survey because they wanted to know if we were, if they had Chocolate with we go. And I'd be like, um, yeah. Bye. <laughs> Do we know when Chalk Couture will be sending out information about ChalkCon? I don't. They did no. send out, I thought it was to every designer, but I guess maybe not. But they just sent out the survey saying, asking questions on like, would you come if you felt more comfortable if uh, people wore masks or had their a test, all that stuff. So I'm assuming we should hear. Soon. I would think soon. Okay, so I'm just going to put... A dollop of hot glue on the top. One on the bottom. And then place it down. And while we still have the time, I'm going to have Sean look at it and tell me if the O looks good there. Oh, yeah. So we're going to then... I think that's perfect. Let it do its thing. Because... Oh, you just... Oh, sorry, sorry. I'm trying okay. to get that from under you. Okay, so we're going to let that dry for a sec because it is... It's not even, it's a, what am I thinking of? It's a bur, it's not bur burlap. It's burlap. Burlap. Oh, you don't have Q-tips down here. Oh, up, upstairs? Say again? Q-tips, you don't have any down here? Uh, yes, yeah, so there should be some down here. They're in the top drawer. Oh, here. Here. Sorry, I thought you meant up. No. Thank Where you. Okay. Oh, we're so close. The last thing we're going to do is just manipulate the flowers to where we have them. I mean, you want it to kind of come out a little bit, but not like, whoa. You want it to be delicate, yet sophisticated, but like fierce. You know, mm -hmm. fierce and what's that word they say? I'm, huh, huh. It's on TikTok. I don't know. I'm savage. Oh, savage. I'm so excited for our meatloaf tonight. <laughs> it's going to take an hour or so to heat still. That's fine. <gasps> okay, we just need to fix this flower because it fell. It's okay, flower. I got you. I got you. You're not the first little oopsie dooly on this board. I got you, babe. Okay, are we ready? Mm -hmm. It's done. Let me step back a bit. Okay. Wow, look at that. Okay, here you go, ub 2 b Which way is ub 2 b This way or this way? Um, the other way around. This way? Yep. Bring, just bring it down. There you go. What do you think? Love it. What do you think, Shawnee? I love it. It looks gorgeous. What does everyone else think? Oh, love is beautiful in your we, face. Very pretty. Love see, these people pretty. know how to lie to me, Sean. Beautiful. These it people, not, they're not when lying. these people talk to me, they're like, Ken, that's not crooked. It's beautiful. Nothing in life is perfect. When I say, Sean, is that crooked? You go, oh, I mean, it's perfect. 
Um, we were going for perfection. I Mahalo, mean, we, this is beautiful we knew it wasn't beautiful, gonna be perfect. Lovely. <laughs> Love. I like it. Love it. I like it. Love it. So beautiful. The O, that works perfect for the yeah, O. Perfect for the O. Yeah. So. I want it. Well, it will eventually be on a sales auction or a sales, sales site. We don't know what we're doing yet. But, so there is that. Um, so to all of our Instagram people, thank you for sticking around. I don't know how long like, this live is. Uh, almost two hours. It tends to be longer when we don't pre-paint the wood you bend. Um, that takes the longest, obviously, in just the prepping and stuff. But... Uh, mm -hmm. Uh, hopefully our plan is Jazzy will be editing videos down into like shorter segments so you can get the whole feel of the whole project. But, um, we missed yesterday's live, so oh, I wanted to spend that. a little bit extra time. Can't even see the break in the rope. I know you can. That's what's great about this stuff. Uh, I know, it's crazy. We get pieces that are, look delicate and you break it, they go right together and you would never even know it was broken. Because by the time when you have it raw and you put it together yep. before painting, it's even better. Well, because here's all the, the I know you two can't see it, but here's all the pieces that we, so this is what it normally ships like. Yep. So those are all the different borders. This is what it ships like. And so there's times where if you don't know, you're like, what's wood you bend in? You're like, uh-oh, doesn't matter. Doesn't matter. You just put it back together. Mm -hmm. It's awesome stuff. I love it. Creativity is amazing. Blown away. So, all right. We will be live tomorrow on TikTok. It'll be a shorter live. So if you're not following our TikTok account, make sure to go to Chalking with Ken. We'll go live same time, 6 o'clock. It will be a shorter project. It will be fun because it is also cocktails and chalking with Ken. Mm -hmm. Um. And uh, it's going to be, I'll let you know right now, an ink project. So if you are in, want to know how our ink works and how to make shirts or totes or ceramics, you are going to want to be here nice. um, and stuff. So uh, thank you, YouTube, for sticking around. And thank you, Instagram. If you guys have any questions, reach out to us, and we'll be happy to answer them for you. Bye, bye, everyone. I'm going to go really take good. two more Excedrin migraine and hope the headache goes away. That's all done. And she's already on the move. She's on the move. Oh, no. Thanks, everyone. Bye, everybody. Come on, girls. Come on, girls. Before you go.